Normally I start the review off with a skit, but instead I'd like to compliment the changes made to Dream and On, and I'm gonna try my best to make it as vague and spoiler free as I possibly can. First, we have Marco going to his Phoenix form, just beautiful, X Drake along with his other elite beast pirates, and this figure with the blue, sorry, white hair and mask. Like I said, no spoilers, but this is going to be a major player in the Raid War. Oh yeah, and uh, this image of Izo and Neko is cool, I guess. Alright, time for my intro! Nah, not that intro. One Piece isn't the only one who's changed their intro. Go to my new intro! What's up, YouTube? Totally Emerald here. Here to review episode 976 of One Piece titled Back to the Present, 20 years later. Actually, small spoiler, the transition to the present isn't how I predicted exactly. The episode starts with Orochi trying to relax and failing no matter how warm his hot tub is. He's all, where could those samurai be? You know? I bet that any one of the scabbards could kill Orochi. He's not weak, but I'm not even sure he can use hockey. We then cut to an injured Ashura crying over Toki's death. Honestly, he's more emotionally hurt than physical. After that, we see Kawamatsu dancing to cheer up a sad Hiori. And it's not working. But all of these are almost nothing compared to how Denjiro is freaking out. He's crying, screaming, punching holes in the wall, everything. You know, I bet this proves he was the loyalist scabbard. Backing this up further, he was a huge fanboy of Odin long before he was a scabbard. Remember this face? Yeah. Well, now it's this. Quite the 180, huh? Also, he dyed his hair light blue like Kyoshiro. Wait a minute, could Denjiro be Kyoshiro? Ah, he is! Yep, only question is, why did he work for Orochi for all this time? Spoiler, we're gonna find out in a minute. We see him in ragged clothes stomping through the capital. Then some thugs tease and attack him. Big mistake. He makes quick work of them. Then they gain his respect and want to follow him. Wow! Talk about deja vu! I know. He's definitely learned a lot from Odin. Yeah! We then see him bowing. Again? Yep. To Orochi for a job as Orochi's guard. Orochi takes a liking to him, especially after he gives him this much money. Jesus! I know. A lot of dough. And we all know a big part of him would rather commit seppuku than become his lackey. But, as the saying goes, desperate times call for desperate measures. And with that, he replaced Hyogoro. Also, he apparently got this habit of narcolepsy. Either that, or it's just the ruse. Oh! It turns out he got the money by stealing it at night, disguised as Ushimitsu Kozo. Quite the name. We then see a panicking Kawamatsu freaking out since he lost Hiori. Man, talk about bad parenting. You're a much better daddy! Really? Yeah! Actually, can I see something for a bit? Sure, Pikachu. You get the spotlight. I know he's lost me many times, but I love my daddy and I always will. <laughs> you really mean that, son? I love you too. Oh, daddy! Okay, moment's over. Back to the review. <laughs> We then see a hungry, ragged, and tired Hiori roaming the capital. Then some women of the Kiroshima family find her and take her to Kiroshiro. When they arrive, Denjiro notices it right away and is all... Yeah, like that. After explaining the truth to her, two things happen. One, they both tear up, obviously. And two, we find out Hiori left Kawamatsu because if she didn't, Kawamatsu would have to give up all his food to Hiori and he wouldn't eat himself and die. Honestly though, she left for nothing because we know Kawamatsu can survive off rotten fish for years, so 
He could have given her all the good food and then ate all the yucky fish. Also, fun fact, the reason he's able to do this is because it's a nod to the type of fish species he is based off, the puffer fish. No, he is not a frog, as a lot of people think. Um, anyway, puffer fish build up a poison known as tetrotoxin by consuming food that contains it in bacteria. After hearing all this, Kiyoshiro tells Yori all he can think about is RAGE! And to not tell even their allies about him. He'll be her new guardian, and she should go by Komaru Saki. Wow, so pretty! Isn't she? She also carries fake blood with her since Orochi is fixated on her. You know, Orochi may be many things, but at the very least, he's not a pedophile like a certain anime villain. Yo, Pikachu! What time is it? It's I catch your time! That's right! Yep, and the first one is of Roger and Odin. Not much to say except they look annoyed. Thankfully, the second one is much better. It's of Momo and Luffy during the attack in Zoa. You know, Zoa is pretty underrated in my opinion. It's actually just behind Dressrosa in my favorite arcs. After that, we fast forward to just months before the present day where Orochi is freaking the beak out while Kaido's just calmly drinking sake. Damn, talk about two sides of the same coin. Opposites attract, like, you know what I mean. Orochi orders his lackeys to keep an eye on the coast and Kaido wants to ask the remnants of the Kazuki a question. My theory is he wants to see how much Momo has grown, which keep in mind, he doesn't know Momo still ate, so if that's his question, he's going to be pretty disappointed. Also, we find out Orochi has a spy and we get the, his backstory with an old-fashioned kabuki scene in black and white. He was born in a theater trope. However, he lost his parents while they were on stage because they were the family of the daimyo killer. Wait! They're Kurizumi? Must be. Luckily, he survived because he was playing characters, but he probably has PTSD. And with that, we're back to the present. Man, what a flashback. I said it before and I sa I'll say it again. Best flashback ever. But, like typical One Piece fashion, they put like four minutes worth of unnecessary recap. Look, the art style and animation may be a lot better, but the pacing is still very bad. And that's putting it mildly. The last scene of the episode is of all the raid resistance marching bravely, and then, like a boss, Luffy is all, Kaido, just you wait, you will fall! Okay. Aside from the five minutes total worth of recap, that was a pretty good episode. Okay, few things I want to note. One, I really don't think Kyoshiro had that sleeping habit as Denjiro, because we never saw him as, you know, with that sleeping habit. I mean, we saw him sleep, but never, like, drought narcoleptic. Uh, don't forget two, to like, really subscribe, comment, the press the Hopefully, bell icon for like, more like anime and manga content. Alright, here's oh, the after I'm show. I'm sorry this video was a day late. Um, I had to wait for NeoXO to finish my new intro. I paid him 15 bucks for it. One second per buck. I mean, one, yeah, got it. You know what I mean. Also, I'm really pumped for summer. I'm, I'm going to post a lot of videos this summer, and I'm learning how to use video ed I mean, photo editing software so I can edit my thumbnails. Because, I mean, I have been for the past few videos, but only the basics, just the text, you know. All right, want to hear my new catchphrase? This is summer! That's going to be my new catchphrase, along with what's up, YouTube. Pretty catchy, huh? All right. You know the drill, Pikachu. Yeah, I know! Just, I'll do it! Alright. Sorry, Pikachu. Okay, guys, so I decided to teach you guys some jujitsu moves. Keep in mind, these are the very basic of the basics since I've only been doing it for two months and only one day at a time. But I'm a fast learner. Alright, first up, forward fold. Roll on. Now I'll be showing you guys some back rolls.
Now I'll be showing you guys some technical stand-up. Always take four. Yes. Stay away! Next up. Yes. Stay away! Hold on now, one more. <laughs> okay, this is the Grammy roll. All right, now I want you guys to compare mine. Stay tight. Like this? Yep. There it is, that's a lot better. That's all, folks.